If you like things that are nice, then you like 80s hair metal. And if you like 80s hair metal, then you like the solo from Lay It Down by Rat. Therefore, we should learn it because it's a thing that's nice. Hey there, kid. It's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Over the last few weeks, I have been reviewing a metric ass ton of amazing 80s hard rock in preparation for the return of my glorious 80s hair metal tribute band, Skank Banger. We decided to celebrate our return to the live scene by adding a few new tunes into our set list, including Lay It Down by Rat, one of my favorite tunes in the band's catalog. Now, some of you guys might remember back on Weekend Wake Shop 192, we talked about the real way to play the main riff of the tune, but on today's video, we're going to talk about Warren D. Martini's legendary solo, Lick by Lick. As always, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more are available to everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today even at just a $1 a month level. You get access to a ton of goodies and an awesome community of people just like yourself. So don't delay. Sign up today. Click the Patreon link in the video description below. Gear-wise for today's video, I'm using my lovely Sir Modern Satin here into the Fractal Audio Axe FX3. And considering that this DoD pedal here helped kill hair metal, I'm not going to use it today. Back to the shelf with you. Let's hear that sick solo again at stepdad speed. Okay, first things first, the original tune is in drop D tuning, uh, but you don't have to be in drop D tuning to play the solo because you never touch the low E string. But if you're playing along with the record, you're gonna be in drop D tuning anyway, so just go for it. Now, I wanna talk about something that happens here at the start of the solo, which is the key change. The entire song has been kind of centered around D, but the entire solo section here drops down a whole step into C. Now that might seem like a weird thing, but that's actually really common in a lot of like 80s hard rock stuff. The guitar solo in Youth Gone Wild by Skid Row changes keys. The guitar solo in Cherry Pie by Warrant changes keys. This is a really common feature in this style of music, just to add a little bit of a, I don't know, a lift to the guitar solo section. Adds a little bit of interest to the song rather than just hearing the same key center over and over and over. So for the solo section here, we're dropping down to the key of C minor. And the first thing that he plays here is to slide down here to the first position on the B string. Now, this is kind of odd because, I don't know, I just figured that he would have played it here in the middle of the neck, but he actually starts down here in the first position. What he's going to do after that is to walk up the C minor scale. Notice the half step bend to get us to the E flat note there. And then what we're going to do is to take it up a half step here to E and bend that up a half step. So you notice that was two bends. Then I held it up and picked it and let it down. Then what you're gonna do is on that same fret, you're gonna play the G string, then the D string. Notice I use my second and first fingers to play that. Puts me in the position to play the next lick. So that was uh, basically kind of walking up a G minor arpeggio, then sliding down to B flat here. So I'm gonna have G and B flat and D sliding down to B flat, and then picking that note again. 
Next, we're going to play some stuff kind of centered around the C minor pentatonic, C blues scale kind of position. Starting off with a big Hendrix C unison bend. The timing of this bend is kind of weird because it actually comes in on beat number four of the previous measure. So uh, really concentrate on nailing that. There's actually a cymbal hit that strikes right as this bend happens. So if you're not really fond of counting, you can listen to that cymbal hit and put that bend right there on top of it. So we're gonna have that big unison bend here. I got a C and a B flat. I'm bending the B flat up and uh, giving it some healthy vibrats to give it that screaming pterodactyl sound before we play this descending sequence in C minor pentatonic. Play it again a little slower here. Essentially what we're doing is walking down the scale in fourths. So you're gonna start off on the root, play the note of fourth down, go up a note in scale, play the note of fourth down, up a note, down a fourth, up a note, down a fourth, up a note, down a fourth. Play it again here. And then what you're gonna do is play that F note there with the whole step bend, taking it back to neutral and picking it. In a lot of the live videos that I saw, it looks like Warren is just playing that with downstrokes. Just to give it a really consistent sound. You can alternate pick your way through it there. And then we have this really cool Van Halen-y blues scale phrase. It's kind of a couple different classic blues scale licks all in one. Starting off with this whole step bend up to the root. And then what we're gonna do is to start from the root here walk down, play this bend on the G, and then after this, walking down the scale, and then there's this bend, and then walk down through the blues scale right there. Now that bend that happened right there, I want to talk about in a second, but let's review. One more time. Now that last bend that happens right there, I'm kind of like going back and forth debating on if it's a whole step bend from F or a half step bend from G flat. It's really hard to tell on the recording even if you slow it down and stuff. And also it's definitely double tracked. Again, a very common thing to do in this era. So he might have played it one way on the left side then a little bit differently over here on the right side. And what we're hearing is kind of the combined result of those two things. Kind of like a Randy Rhodes-ism, you know? Um, on my recording that I put at the start of this video, I double-tracked it and left some little differences in there just to try to capture that sound and not make it an exact, you know, clone on both sides of the stereo image there to try to capture that same sound. So do whichever one you think feels right. Honestly, whichever one you do, it'll probably be okay. They don't really sound all that different at high speed, so... Just go with what works. So after that phrase, we're gonna play this. Again, a really loose phrase right here. We're gonna start off on the uh, A string here, playing F and G, then skipping a string, and going to the G string for at number 10, the F note. Then play this phrase. Again, classic bluesy licks right here. I'm gonna play that a few times because this is the phrase that I kind of struggled with the rhythm of the most. And then you're gonna slide in to G and C right here. After this, we have a fast, alternate picked, three note per string descending run, starting out from the G note on the high E string. Walk down G, F, and E flat, and then play the exact same pattern on the B string. That's D, C, and B flat. And then do another one of those Hendrixy unison bends on E flat. Now after this is another really weird timed lick on the high E and B strings. Okay, you're gonna have to bar the 11 on the high E and B strings. And to start off with, you're gonna hit that E flat on the E string, and then come up here on the B string, and do this pull off from D to B flat. That leads you to this. Okay, so notice again, I'm barring here on the high E and B strings. 
We're gonna do that pull off here from G to E flat. Then hit that again. And do this pull off from F to E flat. And then hit that low B flat note that you're already holding down. Again, kind of confusing. Honestly, it's harder to play that slow because you're kind of wrestling with, you know, barring those two notes and letting them bleed into each other. But if you play it fast enough, you won't really hear any of that bleed going on. So I think it's actually easier to do at speed. So you notice after that lick, I came right back to that E flat unison bend. And then just go down a half step and do that same bend, but on D to signify the return to the D tonal center that we have in the chorus. And that's the entire solo. So we start off with our sexy stuff down here on the B string. Going up to the middle section of the neck for the blue scale stuff. And the high descending runs. Other than nailing all the phrasing and stuff like that, you really want to pay close attention to Warren's super loose time feel that he has through this. It's not like a really metric, you know, really grooving on the 16s kind of solo. It's kind of loose, kind of Van Halen-y, gives it that more bluesy kind of raw sound. Also notice too, just how many downstrokes he uses in this. I think this is a big part of Warren's sound, is how aggressively he plays even in his solos. He uses a lot of downstrokes throughout this entire solo. Dig in there with the pick. Don't let the gain on the amp do all the work for you. Get some extra juice by hitting the string more harder, and it's gonna sound awesome and have that great 80s kind of, you know, hair metal aggression going for it. So don't hit this stuff light. Really dig in with the pick and get a slice of that string. So there you go guys, another hair raising old school 80s classic. The rhythm guitar parts of that song are also loaded with a ton of really cool chord voicings and innovative ideas throughout the tune. So if you want a full breakdown on like everything in this song, let me know and maybe I'll cover that on a rainy day. Thanks so much for liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Be sure to ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. And if you want to help support my channel as well as get access to a ton of awesome bonus goodies, which I know you do, consider supporting my channel over on that Patreon page, patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. The link is down there and I know you wants to be clickings on it because you like things that are nice. I also like things that are nice. So be sure to sign up for that Patreon today and start reaping the benefits. As always, it's been a great time, but I must depart and do some shredding of my own. So get away from the computer and go practice some guitar. Less clicking, more picking.